Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 7 of Feed the Beast Tutorials. So last episode, we demoed the auto spawner. This episode, we're checking out the Dimensional Transceiver from Ender IO. It's very similar to the Tesseracts, if you've ever um, used those before from Thermal Expansion, but slightly different. So if you're not quite sure how to use it, stay tuned as I'm going to show you what its, what its potential is and how to use it most efficiently. So let's get started. So the first thing you can transport is items. So once you place this guy down in the world, you're basically going to be greeted with this screen. And then you've got all the different redstone configurations, so I'm just going to leave it as always active. Configuration ID from where you want, want it to export items to. But I am using uh, Ender.io Conduit, so I don't really need to mess with this too much. And then you've got buffering item stacks. So I believe this means... This determines how it will send its items, whether you want the, the items to buffer in the stacks or whether you want it to just send one item at a time. And I'm just going to leave it on that, which it's set to by default. And if you're not used to these, these guys do require power. So you've got a send and receive buffer and a local buffer. The local buffer is what is being sent through this creative capacitor bank. And I believe this send and receive buffer is the buffer that it's using to send items or whatever you're choosing to send. So just as a quick demo, I've set this conduit up to extract out of here and um, extract out of here and put them into this chest. So it, it essentially it takes items out of that chest and exports them into this chest wirelessly essentially. So to, to do that, what we're going to do is click on the item tab and as you can see, what I've got is this screen here. Now as you can see I've got two different frequencies and to make a frequency you just type into here so if I just type in demo test 2 and I click add channel I can then make that either a receive by doing this or a send by doing this and as you can see now I've got a little scroll bar there. So the thing is this is hooked up to item test which this is also hooked up to so what I can do now is place say some stone in that chest and it will be sent into this chest now also what I can do is go into here which is a little filter so we've also got whitelist, match metadata, NBT. I'm not going to go too much into this but you guys can check that out on the wiki which I'll leave a link in the description to if you really want to know how to do all this so I'm going to have a whitelist for only sandstone so now, if I try to put stone in there, it's not going to be sent across. But, if I change this to a blacklist, stone's going to be able to go through. Because a blacklist means that sandstone is the only thing that's not allowed to go through. Pretty cool. Now, we're going to go into power. And you're probably wondering, I'm not powering this thing directly. And the reason is, on this frequency here, which is meant to be sending power what I can do is if I click receive it's going to receive its local buffer from here and now as you can see the basic capacitor bank is getting some power across wirelessly from the creative capacitor bank so that capacitor bank is also powering this this dimensional transceiver and it's also powering this capacitor bank pretty cool and one other demo what I'm going to show you guys is with liquids so as you can see I've got this guy hooked up to a liquid one so I can see fluid test one is being sent and it's being received here and I believe if I click this on to always active as you can see it's being sent into there and it's now filling up this hardened portable tank with the sludge that was originally in that tank now the last thing what you can do is send minecarts wirelessly to different dimensions and just anywhere else in the world. So as you can see this minecart is basically hooked up to a ender rail which is also from ender IO. So what you're going to want to do basically is get a dimensional transceiver, hook it up on the rail frequency so it's sending and receiving on the same frequency. And basically if I just turn this off over here just to stop it going round. What you're going to want to do is basically place an ender rail on top of it and you can use a Yeta wrench to change what direction the minecart will come out. So what I've got it hooked up to here is to basically send and receive on the same frequency for both, both dimensional transceivers. 
So basically, how this works is it will come out of here, on, on this end, go across over here, and then come back again. So, so these are basically two different ways you can sort of, I don't know, maybe have... So say this was your house, and this was your friend's house, and you had a minecart with a chest in it. This could be a pretty interesting way of transporting items to each other. I don't know. The creativity here is just unlimited of what you can do with basically these dimensional transceivers. Being able to wirelessly trans transmit power, items, fluids, even minecarts. Now, just as a quick warning guys, I don't know if anyone else is having this problem, but I seem to be having a bit of a problem where if, if I try and transport, I seem to be having a lot, a lot of glitches. So as you can see, the minecart's there, it does transport me, but it seems to cause a lot of glitching. So just as a little bit of a warning, in this version I, I've got of Ender.io, it seems to be a little bit of a bug. So thank you for watching guys, hope you've learned a little bit more of how to use the dimensional transceivers. If there's anything I missed, I'll leave a link in the description below to the Feed the Beast wiki where you guys can go and see any more information. So yeah, hope you've, enjo hope you've enjoyed guys. Goodbye from Potent Plum.